this episode of Travelogue. Join us as we enter Sichuan's Tibetan region and make our way over lofty mountain peaks and highland plateaus. We'll dine out on the plains Tibetan style, admire exquisite artwork at the Chongqing Trungpa Lamassery in Litang, and become the guest of honor at a no expenses spared Kanpa Tibetan wedding. So we've just left Ya'an and now must drive through Arlong Mountain in order to reach the Gansu Tibetan Autonomous Prefecture where our next destination lies. Luckily for us, we won't have to climb over Arlong's freezing peaks like these tea porters had to do in the old days. And once we reach the other side, the weather will turn from warm and wet to cold with intense sunshine. As for the next leg of our journey, we'll enter Kangding, the capital city of Gansu Prefecture, pass by Xindutiao, also known as the photographer's paradise, and finally arrive in Litang, one of the highest towns in the world. This is the road we're going to take. Let's get going. The journey from Ya'an to Kangding used to take nearly 20 days to complete back on the Otian horse trail. Thankfully, we now have the Arlong Mountain Pass, which allows us to traverse through the mountain as opposed to over it. At more than four kilometers long, the pass connects two different climate zones, so by the time we'd reached Gansu Prefecture on the other side, it was already nighttime and markedly colder than it was in Ya'an. We finally arrived in Kangding and you can see that this is the best season to come here because of all the cars parked. But uh, for tonight, the most important thing for us to do is to find some accommodation. Let's see if they have any rooms left. Oh, there are several three-star hotels, but they're all packed. Uh, let's go and find another one. Hi, how you doing? Uh, do you still have a bed available for tonight? Uh, but we don't have the single, maybe one bed in the four bedroom? Yeah, 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 that's fine, that's fine as well. Uh, what's the price? It's 30 yuan per person. Okay, no problem. So although the hotels were full, there were plenty of Tibetan-style hostels to take my pick from. The rooms were clean, the staff spoke good English and helped me book taxis, and I particularly enjoyed spending a night in an authentic Tibetan bed. The next morning, we set off to the sound of the rushing river bisecting Kangding. As soon as we left town, the landscape immediately opened up to us. It was an awesome experience driving along our road, with snow and cloud-covered mountains all around us, but we still had to tackle quite a few mountain passes before reaching our first snow-capped peak. Oh, it's bloody freezing! We've left Kangding and we've reached one of the first peaks on Zhedong Mountain. We're 4,300 metres high and uh, I'm not suffering from altitude sickness, but don't get too excited because your heart beats a bit too fast. I'm going to go check out that awesome stupa. Having reached Jodoa Mountain, we've now entered the historic region of Kham. It's one of the three ancient provinces of Tibet, with the other two being Ando and Wei Tang. Once we'd frozen our socks off on Zhedua Mountain, it was a relatively short drive to Xindutiao, our next slightly lower altitude destination. You'll know you've arrived when you see the landscape around you transform into endless rolling pastures dotted with horses and rustic Tibetan dwellings. And in October, when the leaves thaw, the plains are carpeted in a dance of colours.
You don't even have to look for this scenery. It's all around us and everyone stopped here to take photos. There's a very good reason why Sindu Chiao is known as the photographer's paradise. With these kinds of postcard quality landscapes and excellent light conditions, even an amateur can point and shoot for a perfect picture. Honestly though, after taking so many photos of livestock grazing on the pastures, I did start to feel a bit peckish. Alright, let's go get a taste of our first Tibetan meal. It's very common in Tibetan culture to have your meal out on the plains. So, with the surroundings as inviting as they were, I was quite eager to try this traditional way of dining out. Oh, look at this, what a nice spread. My first meal in a Tibetan, in a Tibetan plateau and we're sitting here under the tent under the lovely sky and this is all typical Tibetan food. Also on the menu were yak buns and dumplings. But my personal favourite was a dry Tibetan cheese that tasted great with sugar. All of this was washed down with either butter tea or tinker wine made from barley. Tampa is the uh, staple food of Tibetans. And this is something? So she puts a bit of uh, yak butter in the bowl and mixes it with tea. Zamba. So this is, uh, it's, also, it's also called zamba, but it's barley flour. And she's pouring it into the bowl and... It looked pretty fun to make tampa, so I asked if I could also get in on the action. It feels weird. It's, it's kind of like netting warm mud. Uh, Let's give it a try. Mmm, mm. I can't explain it. It's kind of like cookie dough, um, a bit like a, a wheat biscuit, but it's, it's, it's really, really, really nice. It sticks to your teeth as well. With our stomachs full and fingers smelling like tampa, we headed into town where I was pleasantly surprised to find other foreigners. Hey guys, hey, how you doing? Uh, we're from CCTV9, uh, we're an tra English travel programme. Uh, okay. uh, we saw you guys and we had to stop our car to come out and say hello. Uh, um, okay, sure. How are you, uh, how do you, how are you guys finding Sindu Uh Because we have to change buses to go to Dagong. Oh, okay. Completed. You're going to Dagong? So yeah. where are you going to afterwards? Uh, and, uh, so do you know about Shangri-La? Are you guys here to search for Shangri-La as well? Yeah, we can. Yeah. You've been there already? How was it? It was, it was very good. Nice, yeah. It was good. Did you go? It was very nice. Quite touristy. Okay. It, was it in Yunnan, Zhong, uh, was it Zhongdian or was it, uh, was it Yading in Daotou? Yading. 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 Brilliant, brilliant. That should, uh, that's where we're going as well and that should be, I've heard that it's incredible there and it's, it's meant to be quite so unspoiled. Nice. Yeah, but you have to go to Daoting. Have to go to? Daoting. 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 Which that is very unspoiled. Definitely, definitely. All right, brilliant. We'll, we'll head back on our way then. Okay, sure. All right, have a great day, guys. Okay. Cheers, bye. Although we were spending a lot of time on the road, and sometimes quite perilous ones at that, the scenery was well worth it. From morning to evening, the view outside of the car window was constantly changing, so I was careful not to doze off and miss some spectacular sights. We've left the photographer's paradise of Sindu Chao and we've now arrived at Garsu Mountain. I can see all the way 
to the sacred yellow snow mountain over there and we've come to watch the sunset over the horizon i highly suggest you come at five o'clock because that's when it's at its most beautiful I would have loved to have stayed for the sunset, but we had to rush off to the next town before it got too late. See you guys in Yajiang. Huh? Shiva, what's up? After a very bumpy two-hour ride from Gaurus to the mountain, we finally arrived in Yajiang, where most people spend the night before they head off to Lichang, the highest town on earth. Honestly, my head still hurts, so the prospect of spending a night at 4,000 meters above sea level isn't too fun for me. And uh, Yajiang's 2,600 meter altitude is, <laughs> is probably a lot better. We've come here at night, but people are still having fun and dancing, so I'm going to go and join them. We're going Dance to is a part of daily Tibetan life. Often, you'll find people gathered outside dancing whenever they have a moment to spare. And although I was anything but graceful, I was also swept away by the infectiously cheerful music that night. Shangri-La, a fabled utopia of mystical mountain valleys and a very real paradise on Earth. Join Travelog on a whirlwind adventure as we search for this lost land. Along the way, we'll encounter breathtaking scenery, fascinating cultures, and treacherous mountain paths. From the hardships we endure to the euphoria we enjoy, Travelog takes you to some of the most spectacular parts of China. Join us on our fantastic five-part adventure, Discovering Shangri-La. Right, I'm well rested, my headache's gone and Everyone's getting ready to leave for Litang. Unfortunately, we didn't have enough time to really check out Yadyang, but I've been told its surroundings offer some great trekking opportunities. <laughs> Arriving here at Kadala Mountain, I can honestly say I've never been so excited to see Yak before. Oh my god! Bloody hell, I'm, uh, I think I'm in a bit of a danger zone. Oh, crush, 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 crush. Crush, 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 crush. The yaks oh, are crush, in fact crush, quite crush, friendly, crush, crush. just as long as you don't harass them. And it's actually altitude sickness you need to watch out for. Oh. Even climbing up this hill was tiring enough already. Remember, 4,718 meters above sea level. When you're up at high altitudes, it's important not to get too excited. I'd highly advise against running and jumping around, because I did, and afterwards my head felt like it was being crushed in a vice. Medicines like Hongjin Tian can help, but it's best to just rest well and not overexert yourself. Luckily for me, I dozed off for a while and woke up a lot better. We're still 4,000 meters above sea level. I'm so hungry, I just wanted to grab a yak and bite into them, but we finally found a place to eat. <laughs> oh, 
All right, so this is a local delicacy. It's a xue yu hot pot, which is, uh, I believe, a snowfish, a type of fish that you can only find uh, this high up, 4,000 meters up uh, in the surrounding area. Um, honestly speaking, it's quite a luxury to have this kind of food here, but uh, if you do come, you must have a taste. Bon appetit. It really wasn't cheap at 180 RMB per half kilo, but nothing beats the feeling of having spicy fish hot pot after you've just spent the last two hours on a cold and windy mountain plateau. Speaking of which, the weather on the next stretch of our road was proving to be just as grim. Oh! When we're this high up in the mountains, the weather changes drastically and down there is Li Tang. I can't see it because it's now snowing, but uh, very soon we'll be down there, the world's highest town. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Litang. I've never spent a night at 4,000 meters above sea level, but it's well worth taking a few days out to explore Litang. I didn't expect Litang to be this busy, and walking down the street, you can still see the locals wearing their typical Tibetan outfits, and even the culture here is very well preserved. But you still can find hotels and hostels. But uh, if you do stay here, I would highly recommend that you don't shower on your first day so you don't fall ill. The villagers start their first circumambulation at 6 o'clock in the morning and it's the first thing they do when they wake up. So if you do want to see this, I would advise you to get up early. A circumambulation is basically the act of walking around a sacred object such as a stupa and I was told the best place to see this is here at Baisar Park. People do these circumambulations in order to gain merits for a better rebirth, and they also spin prayer wheels along the way, which have the same effect as reciting mantras. Litong itself plays an important role in Tibetan Buddhism. Several high lamas reincarnated here, the most notable of which was the sixth Dalai Lama who actually wrote this love song and for whom this park was apparently built to commemorate. <laughs> So we're at the entrance of the Changqing Chunkur Lamassery here in Litang and uh, these guys are here busy working on their mani stones and this is pretty cool and uh, over there you can see this massive mound of mani stones and a huge chorten as well. I'm going to go inside and have a look at the Lamassery. You'll often find piles of these colourful mani stones lying around. Most are inscribed with the six-syllable mantra of Om Mani Peme Hum, the mantra of the Bodhisattva of Compassion. I've read that pilgrims carry these sacred stones and deposit them all over the landscape as votive objects. They're dotted around rivers, mountain passes, and in particular, near places of religious importance. Just a little further on from the wall of Mani Stones is the huge fortress-like Changqing Chunkur Lamassery that overlooks Litang. 
Built in 1580 at the request of the third Dalai Lama, this lamasserie has thousands of monks and residents and is one of the largest Gelugpa or yellow hat sect lamasseries in China. Grand though it is, this impressive structure serves a very functional role and is visited daily by pilgrims. Inside is a world of incredible artwork, and though I'd be lying if I said I could recognize all the deities, I did at least make out two versions of Vajrapani, the Bodhisattva of Wrath, and several of the statues inside the main hall. The Changqing Chunkur Lamasserie is one of the most important lamasseries of the Gelugpa sect, and here you can find incredibly intricate statues, and this one is Tsongkhapa, the founder of the Gelugpa sect, and sitting next to him, the forearm version of Avalokiteshvara, the Bodhisattva of Compassion, and next to her is Manjusri, the Bodhisattva of Wisdom. And you must remember that when you come here, you mustn't point, and if you are to refer to someone, you must point your palm up to show respect. During a period of strife between the main sects of Tibetan Buddhism, the founder of the Gelugpa sect, Tsongkhapa, combined teachings from various schools into one clear path for his students to follow. Due to the popularity of his teachings, the Gelugpa sect emerged as the dominant one. Built with only the best materials and often redecorated, the murals inside the lamasserie are highly acclaimed and the statues are adorned with precious jewels. However, the most valuable treasure is held in a separate hall, off-limits to visitors. When King Songsan Gampo, the man credited with bringing Buddhism to Tibet, married a Nepalese princess in the 7th century, she brought with her an exquisitely decorated statue of the Sakyamuni Buddha. It is this 1400-year-old statue that stands as the centerpiece of this hall. Oh, wow. This is nice. Uh, hold on, you can't see very clearly, but... Uh, this is actually the footprint of the third Dalai Lama who built this lamasery, and next to it, the footprint of the seventh Dalai Lama who was reborn here in Litan. For Tibetans, religion is deeply ingrained in every aspect of daily life, and children are taught from an early age to respect its ideals. And of course, religion becomes all the more important on that most special day. Locals told me uh, I might be able to catch a Tibetan wedding, so I've actually come here to wait for the bride and groom. This is exciting. This was a typical camper wedding, and everyone had turned out in their best attire. Campers are one of the three main subgroups of Tibetans, and their men are known for being handsome and fearless, and their women for being beautiful. They also take pride in their clothes, and the dress code today includes elaborately decorated robes and headwear and jewellery made of real gold, coral and other precious stones. An entire set may cost upwards of 5 million RMB, so these outfits are usually treasured heirlooms that are passed down through the generations. <laughs> They're all family members such as brothers and uncles, and one was appointed to read out rites and perform ritual offerings. <laughs> If you also get invited to a Tibetan wedding, you really must join in. But just also keep in mind that you should always respect their customs.
all in all, Li Tong had been fantastic to us, and I feel like I've come away with a much better understanding of Tibetan culture. My only regret is that we didn't get to explore Li Tong's famous grasslands, but if you do want to see them, I'm reliably informed that they're at their best in summer. As we entered the Gansu Tibetan Autonomous Prefecture, we visited Kangding and saw the best that autumn had to offer in Xindujiao. We traversed over mountains over 4,000 meters high and spent a night in Litang, the highest town on earth. I had a great taste of Tibetan culture and also more than my fair share of altitude sickness. But our journey towards Shangri-La isn't even halfway through. I've had great expectations so far because the landscape has been amazing. So let's see what we'll see on the rest of our journey. I'm Turan and I'll see you on the next episode of Travelogue. Ha, So you guys later.